also, Mark, I mean, let's slide it forward a little bit to school ages, right? Now, that's pretty ham-fisted there when it comes to a kids' TV show, but let's talk about safe schools, and we talk about this way too frequently. You've come out and publicly said many times, you've shown us how uh, safe schools is gone in name but exists in curriculum, in uh, teaching materials and all the rest of it, and there's more to talk about tonight on this. Well, you know, this is what I say about uh, all of life is supposed to be political. Uh, for some people, this is a, an ideology, an obsession, to think that you can take little kids and sexualise them and give them messages. And, and somehow in New South Wales, where particularly in government's lost control of the education system, we've ended up with 42,000 professional development courses. It's hard to believe, isn't that? 42,000 professional development courses, 800 providers who are accredited, but nobody knows what's in the 42,000 courses, a lot of them behind paywalls, membership logins, secret Facebook groups. And in the ideology of this, so just last week, there was a Victorian mob, this is taxpayers' expense in New South Wales, who were um, teaching the safe school stuff uh, behind a paywall. We got access to it, and, and I'll be unveiling that and showing people in the parliament what we're actually um, funding there. So when you get to the point of you, you're saying that the entire classroom in a preschool for three and four year olds uh, needs to be um, uh, normalised and made comfortable for transgender figures and gender fluidity is a message you push, push to the kids, uh, I think there's a certain sickness in it. Now, any kid who, you know, in adolescence is transgender, they should get the counselling and all the uh, normal services that would be available in a school. But for three and four year olds, there's a sickness in, in saying that you interrupt play uh, to try and push a transgender or gender fluid message. So this ideology uh, is frightening. And the fact that it's uh, crept pretty forcefully into 42, uh, some of 42,000 professional development courses in New South Wales just shows that you can get safe schools out of the curriculum but these fanatics will bring it in in other means because they are so determined to do so. What about, Nicholas, uh, what Mark was just saying there about how, you know, everything being political, everything being turned into political? That's certainly the feeling that you get. When, look, we all, of course, grew up with the only bunny that we didn't really learn anything from, but Watch was, of course, Bugs Bunny. But now, you know, you've got Arthur, and yes, I know we're talking about a kid's cartoon, but let's slide it on to what he just said about what's happening when it comes to, uh, to safe schools. Now, none of us, none of us want... Um, want uh, trans kids to be bullied, but I've always said that my anti-bullying policy uh, only has two words and it's no dickheads, right? Which is that, you know, it's, it's or, or a few more. Don't be a dickhead. Don't be a dickhead to the gay kid, uh, the, per, the kid of colour, the kid in the wheelchair, the kid with the lisp, the fat kid, the, whatever, right? I, I don't think you need to particularly overdo this, but what do you think about what Mark just said about how, again, we are taking certain messages and distilling them down to pretty silly levels with pretty young kids so their first building block is one that starts about identity politics rather than coming to understand the concepts of identity. Yeah, well, look, I'll start by saying that, like you, uh, Paul, I have a lot of children's television uh, going on in the background of my life. In fact, here in Melbourne, uh, in ISO at the moment, homeschooling three kids, it's like the musical wallpaper of my life. I'm going stir-crazy uh, with the... Uh, other programs out there. Yeah. I mean, look, I don't think um, political messaging in children's television is particularly new, to be honest with you. I mean, I can remember Sesame Street, uh, which was a great children's program I used to watch growing up, that had some quite political messages in it. Uh, and, and, you know, I, I think I'm, we're probably all more balanced human beings as a result of some of those messages. I, I mean, you can't strip politics out of everything. I mean, there's a political saying, personal is political. And so I agree, you know, debates about I don't know, tax policy and those sort of things, very hard to talk to children about those. But there are issues about personal issues like, like racism that I think if handled well, you can have a conversation with children about them. Uh, now, I'm not saying Arthur has necessarily done that well, but I think there are examples of when children's television has done that well. And I think Sesame Street is an example of that. As for safe schools, I mean, you know, Mark Latham talks about, you know, people being obsessed by safe schools and uh, being fanatical about it. I mean, Mark, I think you've become obsessive and fanatical about safe schools. I mean, what is wrong with creating a, a safe and supportive and inclusive environment in our schools for LGBTI 
uh, people? What What is wrong with trying to stamp out bullying against LGBTI kids in, in schools? Yeah, but that's I not mean, safe I, schools, I, I, Nick. I, I, Ros, Ward, you know I mean? Ros Ward, the but, developer of the program, admitted that it was a neo-Marxist program, uh, not about anti-bullying. So don't give us that argument, that because it's got a nice title, it's about anti-bullying. The originator of the program said it was neo-Marxism. But, Nick, I'll tell you what I am fanatical about, and that's getting kids into good qualifications and good jobs and a good life. Yeah, yeah. And how you me can too. tell me we that Victorian are. Network last week, which was taking the anti-bias textbook and saying, uh, as part of that textbook, that what should happen in preschools is if the little kids there have got a uh, marriage playtime where there's a boy and a girl doing a mock marriage, the adult teacher should step in and show them that the boy can marry another boy or a, the girl can marry another girl. These are three- and four-year-olds. And if you think that's education, Nick, you're as sick as the silly bastards instructing this last week. That is a sickness trying to sexualise little kids yeah. and have all sorts of impact on their life when all they're doing is trying to play. They haven't got a sexual bone or instinct in their body. That doesn't come to puberty. And for you to be authorising this under the name of anti-bullying, being nice to transgender, is so much rubbish so untrue, so damaging, and quite frankly a sign that you will defend any rubbish in the education system because you think the personal should be political. Well, I'll tell you well, one thing, mate. The three- and four-year-olds, the personal and the education should not be sexual. Nick? Well, well uh, I think you... Firstly, I, I don't agree with what you said. Secondly, I, I heard you throw in some sort of Marxist line. I mean, I think you're turning into Rita there. You know, if there was someone who had a Marxist viewpoint that had anything to do with the program, the whole thing must be wiped the out. Author this said sort of it was. Oh, weird reds under the bed kind of stuff we're hearing again. She said, I mean, Mark, you know, I, 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 you, you know, I've been a long time admirer of your work. You know, I, I've got all your books. Uh, you know, you talk so brilliantly about the. Uh, uh, the ladder of opportunity. I can I can tell you, as a young man in my 20s, I, I was carrying that ladder of opportunity everywhere I went because it was such a vision for Australia. And I, I, I just I, I want to hear you talking about those sort of things again. Well, hang on, Nick. These are realities, mate. You can't put your head in the sand and pretend they don't exist. Nick, do you think it's right that a preschool teacher would intervene when kids are just doing a mock wedding and insist that the boy can marry a boy and the girl can marry a boy? Do you think that's right? Do you think personally that's right? And would you have that for your children? Well, I would need to know the context in no, no, which no, that no, discussion don't, 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 occurred. Don't try I mean, and avoid the question, It's mate. just it's if they're playing. Straight here. It's just I'll if they're playing. I'll what's in the textbook. Answer the question. Well, it, it does seem a bit unusual to me, Mark, but well, if, the, if okay. the kids were being told that a, a man can only marry a woman, then I'd hope at some point during the lesson the teacher would point out, oh, and by the way, kids, no. in modern Australia... But that's it's the whole also point. Okay it's not the lesson. Woman, it's, it's, marry a man. That's, but that's the thing, Nick. It's not the lesson, it's the playground. It's not a lesson they're kids playing and the teacher's told to intervene directly. You know, the big adult walks in, yeah. gets a boy next to a boy and says, yeah, you're getting married, girl next to girl. This is a, mate, it's, it's an intervention. It's not, it's not education. Whereas I'll say this, guys, I'll jump in here to say this, right, is this that obviously, you know, I keep talking, obviously my experience is only of my little girl, but, you know, I'm, I'm very open about saying to her, um, you know, look, you can love whoever you love, you can marry this, marry whichever, right? But the idea that somebody would intervene in, in the play, in the playground, Rita, that's what kind of sends people a little bit nutty. That's what pisses people off here is that, again, it's not even in the classroom, it's patrolling play. Yeah, it's, it's insane. And for Nick to continuously deny reality, deny the claims made by the program's own uh, founder, Ros Ward has said that the, uh, the program is about promoting sexual and gender diversity, not about stamping out bullying. So... If he wants to say that the founder of the program doesn't know what her own aims were, then, hmm. well, good on you. I mean, how can you argue against that? It's well, just like arguing against, you know, water is wet and fire is hot. You're well, not going to get anywhere.